Last time I was in the Keys, I was super depressed, but this time it's a bright, beautiful, sunny day. I got a positive attitude. I got about 10 dozen live shrimp, two dozen blue crabs, and best of, and best of all, a positive attitude. That's not going to be your intro, but we can see it. Maybe it could be. Who knows? We'll see. Well, you know, the magic of editing makes all things awesome. I am personally like five hours into travel for today. I'm oh, driving yeah, sure. a Sebastian. lot. Yeah. Two hours from my place to Vic's place. Now we're like two and a half hours down the road, almost to the spot. I am with Victor from Landshark Outdoors. What's up, guys? And Brooke Christ. Brooke Christ Outdoors? Yeah, it is outdoors. Hi. And we are about to do some keys fishing, some bridge fishing, something that's been really hit or miss my last couple of trips. Either you catch a fish that you just totally geek out on, or you stand on the side of the bridge and you just feel, wonder if any of this trip was even worth yeah. it. But I'm, I'm excited to get out, do something a little bit different. Been a while since we've been doing this, and it is just a gorgeous day down here. It was raining where we were, so we got out of the rain. What do you We're want to catch, catch today? Fish. I would love a Cabarrus snapper or a big keeper mutton. I've never caught a keeper mutton over like the 20 inch range off the bridge. Um, and then I want to get a Cabarrus snapper over 10 pounds. That's my goal. I want to catch yellow jacks. Like big yellow jacks? Any or size yellow Any jacks. size? Any size. <laughs> I'll take an extra large yellow jack, a permit, a black grouper that's legal size, a legal mutton, a cubera. If I catch any of those, I will consider this a successful trip. If not, I'll edit this out and then <laughs> pretend like something else made me happy. No, I'm just kidding. But that's kind of what I'm looking for. Let's see what, let's see what happens. much the first step when we get out of the bridge it's all set up so untangling the rods changing the water on the baits so we have a bunch of live bait crabs pinfish shrimp and stuff like that got to give them fresh water because they're much less likely to die so that's what Vic's doing right now he's getting some fresh water important job of the entire trip is this right here changing the water because we spent what we spent probably two hours getting bait today right absolutely so you go to all these different tackle shops looking for bait and like on a trip like this where we're doing an overnighter and we're gonna fish tomorrow morning, we wanna make sure our baits last. You may spend all this time and money getting bait. Something as simple as a water change every hour makes a huge difference in the way your bait lasts and also just swims and presents itself. Yeah, and you it don't even have to do every hour, like every couple hours, you know, three hours. That makes a huge difference, especially when you're all, out all day on a hot bridge and you think all your bait is in there it's you know excreting you know body fluids and stuff like that and it's just poisoning the water and this is a whole block of menhaden chum so it's gonna leave a giant slick of oil and really just attract a lot of fish brings up a bunch of snappers and stuff like that so one of the first things that we do once we get to the bridge just kind of fling it over don't get rope burn in your hands because that didn't feel good and i kind of let it out just a little bit and then I tie it off to the rim. It's hard for you guys to see down there, but there are all sorts of little snappers, yellowtails, mangroves, parrotfish, and tropical fish all coming up to the chum literally as I just put the frozen block down. It's kind of like they know the drill. They know what to expect once a chum bag goes in the water. Just gonna take this live pinfish and I'm gonna put him down kind of straight down in this deeper kind of channel part is kind of where the water flows traditionally we've been putting a lot of grouper baits and stuff on pilings but i'm gonna try something a little different try this see if maybe i can pick up a stray black grouper or something like that with entice that bite with a live pinfish oh no it was a black grouper. It was a black grouper. Yeah. 100%. I see him right there, dude. On? On. Oh, no, it's on. Rick, you want it? Dude, you got a better fish. Dude, I got a yellow tail. 
Yeah. You guys got the better fish for sure. This one was just sitting on it. Right, you're on, bro. That's good, that might be a mine. It's trying to go up and down. Yep. Ow! This thing just spiked me. Don't let the yellow tail go. Thank you. Okay. Now stop. You gotta do a big swing. Watch out, watch out. We're ready. We've been hit with muttons before. Woo! <laughs> Caught one of these little grouper species on the voodoo shrimp. I was just working that next to one of the pilings. Can't remember what these are called. I looked it up once because they kind of look like strawberries, but they're a different coloration. But they don't get very big. Still super cool and definitely super aggressive to eat that shrimp that's half his size. There you go, bud. Yellow jack on. Get it, get it, dude. Uh, You're real. Thanks, dude. Oh my gosh, this little. We just put out a little pilchard. It's inside the case. Put out a little pilchard on this rod. Light leader, little circle hook. Something picked it up. Who knows what it could be? Oh, I'm hoping like a yellow jack or something like that. With the light rods, <laughs> it is fun. Hear that thing singing? This is a good fish. Real good fish. It feels like he's in something. Oh no. He's totally in something out there. So this thing was just busting off a big run. You guys probably saw that on the GoPro, but now he's like found a hole out there and just stopped. I didn't think there was anything out there, but he's just kind of like pulled up hanging inside something. I'm gonna just sit here, loosen up a little bit, kind of like play the banjo with my line, see if it gets him to come out of his hole. But this is not a small fish by any means. And I only got like 15 pound liter on here. So I don't want to put too much pressure because I'm gonna lose him. What the heck? Dude, it like rocked me. Probably a mutton. It rocked me. I think it definitely could be a mutton. Maybe remove the tension. See if it gets them to come out. I'm just kind of sitting here waiting. Brooke is the queen of this. Just sitting there waiting on the fish. Oh, there he is. He came out. Nice button, dude. Oh, keeper for sure. Oh, dude. Big button. Kudo was literally Can you after him. A little bit to the left. Yep. <laughs> no. This is I'm really getting fine. the shot. Come on. That's oh, a nice yeah. one. Hey, you building. said you wanted a big mutton. Dude. Guess what you got? Dude, on the light tackle, Look dude. That how, thing brawled. Nice patience, man. <laughs> Look how pretty it is. Woo! Look at that. Nice thing. fish. Keep a mutton. <laughs> how long do you think Vic, that move is? move your shadow. 22, 23. All right, let's walk down and make sure, but I think that's easily 20-something inches. we we'll grab him. That is sick. On the light rod too, you guys saw me flip out that little pilchard earlier. This rod just started singing and he literally rocked me. Bam, bottom of the jaw. We are sitting at 21 inches. That is a stud of a mutton from the bridge. My biggest mutton from the bridge. I've actually, uh, I've never caught one before. 
that's legal from the bridge. I've caught a lot of shorts in these past couple trips. Never a legal one in that. That little circle hook got him, man. God. Just look at that. Oh, don't bite me, buddy. He's trying. He barely moved. Yeah. Pull. Ripped right out. Look at that. Stoked. It's funny what one fish can do, right, Vic? Absolutely. Get you stoked? The group morale just <laughs> went from a zero to a hundred. Good job, dude. Yeah, that's, thanks, a, that's a nice mine. Biggest from the bridge. Yep. On the voodoo. Oh my god, look at all those jacks. That's a school of so many jacks. Woo hoo hoo, son. There's so many of them. Vic, dude, you gotta get a bait in the water. Oh, mine's trying to stay with the school. Oh, he's just realizing he's hooked now. <laughs> Light tackle. Jack and Rush, keep going, keep going, keep going. It went down a little bit. I pitch out like right there. I would say they're going out a little bit. Like my fish was staying with the school, you know. I wanted him to get the hook out. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. Oh, I'm done. <laughs> well, that's what I get for messing around. I just let my jack stay with the school. Vic, try over here. Yeah, they went under. Did not put enough pressure on mine and broke them off. But whatever, that was fun. Nice little run. Like a 10 pound jack, but uh, you forget a lot of the time because you catch jacks in other places and they fight hard. But when you add the factor of current and light tackle, they fight even harder. <laughs> I uh, definitely wasn't paying attention there, and he just went under the bridge. Oh well. Dangle, dangle. On here? Stay on, buddy. Yo, Jack. Yellow Jack. Yellow Jack. Ah. The benefit of having all these rods out. Find something. But that nice little live grunt. Come on, buddy. Where you at? fishing TV show I ever watched in my entire life was Flip Pallet down in the Keys. Anyone in the fishing industry knows Flip Pallet. Super cool. Older gentleman, but he had a TV show way back in the day. And he was catching these things. I had never seen them before. And he's like, you know, in the Florida Keys, a lot of guys turn their nose up at these fish. They're actually delicious eating fish. And the last time I had Yellow Jack, 100% delicious. Great fighters. You know, they fight kind of like Jack Crevel. And I think that's why people associate them with jacks that aren't necessarily always considered good eating fish, but stoked. He smoked that little grunt. That was pretty cool. Cool, my mutton. Mutton. You know? little mutton. Come on, buddy. Start and kill. He's bite. not bad at all. I mean, that's a fifteen, sixteen incher. You know, I had just touched your rod and moved it like two feet I over. I saw you. <laughs> and then it went off and I was like, what? You gave it oh, that oh. good touch. Another rod. He's so close. this one measured out is about 17 inches. So one inch short. But just super healthy, fat mutton snapper, man. He's super angry at me. You guys like mutton snapper on the bridge be sure to like the video helps the channel out a lot let's like it let let's let this guy go man the sun's getting to me ah. 
it because we haven't had much action at all. I'm gonna get some pliers real quick, get them unhooked. This side. See that? Like an old wound from something attacking it. Nice windy, rainy day in the Florida Keys. Sunshine State, right? Welcome back to the filet table. We have that beautiful mutton that I caught on the bridge that I'm super stoked to clean up and then I'm gonna cook him. But first, I actually have a pretty big announcement for you guys. Navalis Apparel is now a sponsor of the channel or a brand that I'm gonna be working with going forward. So I wanted to give them a little shout out, let you guys know what I think of the brand. I have been wearing them for a couple months now and it's very unique. I haven't worn shirts like this before. It's made out of bamboo. So bamboo, it's a a little bit more sustainable and it has some unique properties so it's very very soft much softer than other shirts that I've worn in the past it's as light as kind of like those polyester type shirts but it's feels kind of like cotton on your skin so it feels a little bit nicer on your skin and I've been really really enjoying wearing them and I'm excited to go keep working with the brand going forward I have a discount code, it's Ryan20, that'll be on the screen, and I have uh, some links in the description for you guys, but check them out if you're interested. If you're looking for some fishing shirts, maybe for like Christmas presents or something like that, you buy shirts like that with my code, it's gonna help support the channel and help me make cooler videos for you guys. And I, I think you guys can see that I'm trying to put a lot of work in the channel, trying to make the channel better, and uh, I hope you guys are just excited for the ride. I think we're going places. Now, I've caught a decent amount of mutton snapper in my day, but I think Vic, this will resonate with him, and it'll resonate with you all that like to fish from land. And that's that land-based fish. It's just, a, it's almost like a different thing. Even though it's the exact same fish that you catch when you're going offshore, catching a fish from land feels exceptionally more rewarding because you just know that you worked exceptionally hard for it and not a lot of guys have done what you're doing. So this is my first keeper mutton from land, a 21 inch fish that, you know, I'd be happy to catch this offshore if I, if I caught it, but this one had me ecstatic. It just, I was geeking over it realistically. And it's just a very, very delicious fish. One of my favorite eating fish, gorgeous. It fought hard. I got to catch it on light tackle. I got to catch it on a light spinning rod. And it's, you know, it's a memory. That's really what it comes down to. Vic knows this was a, a grind of a trip. We, we definitely grinded it out. Two Lots days. of bait. Yeah, two days for realistically, you know, to bring one fish home to eat, but nothing the matter with that. It's, it's what it becomes is it becomes a memory forever at this point. So I'm glad you guys were there for it. I think I've said it in a video in the past, but you know, way back in the day when Vic and I were doing some of our first trips together, just a couple bros trying to figure out this whole fishing thing. Vic and I were pretty equal at filleting fish. And since he has just continued to grow and become pretty much the go-to guy on YouTube when it comes to catching cooks, he gives me all these tips now and he's scoffing because I'm going through the rib cage, <laughs> but it just is what it is not missing a whole lot he's really good at getting over the rib cage but i always seem to have a problem with it yeah mm. close to that so there is our mutton snapper filet which actually turned out pretty darn good i'm gonna clean this guy up just a little bit because our recipe is gonna be mutton snapper on the half shell so you guys have seen me skin fish in the past but we're actually gonna leave the skin and the scales on and we're gonna cook it on the grill like this and it's gonna help to hold in a bunch of juices and everything like that. So I'll see you guys in the kitchen. Rosemary olive oil. Mm -hmm. You know you're in Casa de Lanchar when you just have high quality ingredients like this. But I got three words for you guys, maybe. Is it gonna be three words? We'll figure it out. On the half shell. No, nah? well, simple, easy recipe is what we're going for. On the half shell, we left the skin on, and we're gonna hold a lot of flavor in here. And then we're just gonna go with a couple really simple ingredients and throw her on the grill. The grill's heating up in the backyard right now. Pretty much everyone's gonna have this anyways. A Little bit of salt. Some cracked pepper. And the favorite ingredient of the man behind the camera, the man, the myth, the legend, Victor. It's garlic powder, in case you guys don't know. In case you don't watch Victor's channel, 
Garlic powder is the king of ingredients. When are we gonna see land shark garlic powder? I would love to see that. Just the own brand of garlic powder? Yeah, your own garlic special powder. blend. Special land shark garlic powder. We upcharge everyone, it'll be great. Yeah, bad time. <laughs> okay, last, last but not least, I'm gonna place a little bit of lemon, just some lemon slices. Mainly, this is just gonna become an aesthetic thing. However, we'll give them. And since we've been on a bridge for basically two days now, we definitely need some vegetables in our system. So, got some of that fancy rosemary olive oil. Add that on top of our asparagus. And then I'm just gonna kinda roll them. Just make sure they got a little bit of olive oil. And this is gonna go on the grill as well. That smells really good. It does. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. Rosemary. Aromatics. Oil. I'm a, not a big fan of rosemary. And then we're just gonna add a little salt and pepper on these guys as well. But really, I mean, the, the name of the game, especially when it's been a long couple days of fishing, don't wanna do anything super crazy, don't wanna do an extravagant dish, just want some delicious food with good friends. It's what I am all about. Dude, you are um... that. Hear that camp chef, she's talking to us. It sounds great. Bam. Do you have enough room for your asparagus? Absolutely. So. I think, oh, it's hot. yeah. <laughs> it's definitely hot. Oh, uh, hear that sizzle? Those mutton snapper scales. No, I'm really excited, man. So mutton snapper, all snappers in general, definitely one of my favorite fish to eat, but mutton in particular, it's just, it's like slightly elusive, I guess. And I just get really excited whenever I catch one. And then eat one. And then eat one. I agree. That and Camaro Snap are my two favorites. Yeah, 100%. Fish has been on for like five-ish minutes. Just gonna add the asparagus in here. See, mutton's already getting a nice color to it. You can see around the edges. Still got that, you know, translucence in the middle, but probably take it in, I don't know, maybe another 10 minutes or so, something like that, and we'll check it. Beauty of the skin being on it is it's holding all those juices in. So all the juices, all that flavor isn't dripping off into the rest of the fire, into the grill. All right. So it was about 25 minutes in total, and these guys started looking right. I'm gonna lay them on a nice, fancy platter, garnished with literally with parsley literally cooked, cooked, grown, <laughs> grown in Brooke's garden. Brooke was like, hey, don't worry, I got a nice garnish for you. I got some really, really nice parsley, and it's gonna make the plating look excellent. And I don't know, what do you guys think? Because I think it looks excellent. It's just a nice family meal. Brooke cooked up the yellow jack on her channel and I cooked up the mutton snapper. We're just gonna have a nice little family meal. A couple drinks, some laughs. It's a great time with friends. It stays on the plate and you just get the meat from the snapper, just like this. So mom and dad plating up dinner. About time someone was grateful for all the work that goes on in this house. There's a little sneak peek. And that's why we fish for mutton snapper right there. Oh yeah? Let me mm -hmm. give it a shot. Let me give it a shot. Mm -hmm. Well mutton snapper actually pulled It's the hot. pinnacle, it's the pinnacle of bottom fish, I'll tell you that right mm. now. What's the pinnacle? Mmm. That's so good. This is the Ryan Mori fans at home. I didn't film a video. These two did, they caught all the fish. I don't think I caught a single fish worth keeping, worth talking about this entire trip, but it's cool to see your friends thrive, your fiance thrive. But it, what I th find the most amazing part about this trip, we spent two days in the Keys, only brought home two fish, and this is way more fish than we would even need. Like there's gonna be some left over, and it goes to show you that you do not need to kill it out there. It's all about the the brotherhood, the sisterhood out there, and that's it. I'm just having a good time. You know, we work for the fish. Congrats on Ryan getting his first ever keeper mutton off the bridge. 
pretty cool. Thanks, man. Yeah, man. And you did the fish justice. You really did. It's really good. Um, I absolutely love fish on the half shell. Redfish on the half shell, any kind of snapper, whether it's yellowtail, mangrove, mutton, anything is so, so good. What it does is it just keeps all that moisture inside of the fish and it's so good, you can't dry it out. So if you've never tried that, give it a try. And I wanna say one more thing. As you guys probably know, Ryan doesn't do many catch and cooks. So if you guys enjoyed this, comment yeah. down below and let him know whether or not you wanna see more of them because as you guys know, Victor and I really enjoy catching cooks. So if you guys want to see him do more of them, hopefully he's not crying behind the camera. <laughs> Comment down below <laughs> and let him it. let him know what you think about doing catching cooks. So that's all I gotta say. I mean, look at this. It is so flaky and tender and moist. It's just mutton snapper is just like the pinnacle of all the snappers right there. It's amazing. I heard this the other day, and I loved it. Um, I think it was on another YouTube video actually. And it's, if you want to go fast, you do it by yourself. If you want to go far, you do it with a team. And having a team is so massively important. Like all day, you know, we're all going through our ups and downs of feeling motivated to do stuff, feeling motivated to fish, re-rig, catch more bait, whatever it is. And it's hugely important to just have a lot of people around you that encourage you, that want you to do well. And I feel super lucky to have Victor and Brooke and a bunch of friends like that that just want to see me succeed. And I'm super lucky to have you guys that want to see me succeed. So thank you guys so much for watching today's video. And I'll see you in the next one. Oh, that was so nice. nice.